All right, folks. Welcome back to uh, another episode of Man Buns of Jesus, aka Coffee Protein Shakes of Jesus, uh, aka There's a name to this podcast. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not changing the name again. I'm not no, doing it. We, not in the. We system. don't have to. Nope. It's fine. It's it's set. It's done. We're good to go. Uh, I am Pastor Ben Olschlager. Uh, from Good Shepherd, Lake Orion, Michigan. That is Pastor Josh Laborious from Edgewater Lutheran Church in Eastvale, California. And Josh, what are we talking about today? Uh, today we're going to be talking about um, something that is really close to my heart. And uh, there's kind of evidence for this because um, I'm in a, in a doctoral program right now. And this is what my thesis is eventually going to be on. So um apologies if i geek out y'all but uh essentially we're just going to be talking about how important christian relationships are and i'm not talking about like uh dating i mean i guess that's included but mostly just christian friendships right um and this is coming out of i'm i'm taking a class right now it's it's called ecologies of christian formation and essentially what it's getting at is um we're talking about different ways that Christians learn how to be Christians, right? Different ways that, and the word we're using is formed. And I think that's actually a really good word because it, it's more encompassing than words like taught or, or educated or indoctrinated. Um, that last one's a little offensive to some people, I guess. So formed, and it also gets to more than you don't just understand what the Christian faith is, but it actually, it shapes how you live, how you interact with people, even how you kind of think about things and view the world and react to the world. So um, that's what this class is about. And what ultimately it's coming down to, and we're reading a fair bit of research on it, is that it doesn't happen through programs. Um, so if you're at either one of our churches and you're waiting for, well, I guess I don't know what you're doing but you're waiting for one of us to roll out like this big discipleship program where it's just like a, you, you put a person in, they go through the machine and they come out the other side of the disciple. That's not how it works. Um, mm. I suspect that there was a point in history where that might be how it worked because there, I think you go back like 50 some years, maybe, maybe a little bit further. I think people were much more open to tell me what to do and I'll do it. There was a, uh, there was less questioning of authority. There was less, um, it was more of a memorization model and less of an understanding model. But now everyone is shifting to that. You just telling me isn't good enough. Um, so what's effective now is, is through relationships. Um, yep. You got anything on that opening tirade? Yeah. Uh one, yes, you already are geeking out, so this could be rough for some of us, but Sorry. Uh, you're good. <laughs> I'm just giving you crap. I haven't um, pulled up my paper yet. Um, oh, I had a thought. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Uh, so kind of bouncing off of the, the whole, like, times have changed thing. Uh, it's not just that, like, there, there's a suspicion of authority it's not just that there's a suspicion of um, like systems and structures and that kind of thing but i think there's just a, a suspicion of anything that's not formed out of a deeper relationship it's not formed out of uh, personal history it's not formed out of uh, a direct connection to something um, it's really hard to convince someone of anything if you walk in off the street and and don't have much of a connection or a relationship with someone on something um and, and so in general whether it's the christian faith or um you know trying to convince someone of your politics or trying to convince someone that um the the lord of the rings extended editions are the only true versions of the of the trilogy um and that the Which hobbit they are is, in, in case you're listening and curious they are yes the only absolutely version absolutely and that the hobbit is kind of atrocious by kind of i'm mean, very um but like 
with the trilogy, you need a full 12 hours to convince someone that that's the way to go. Just because you have to get through all the movies once. Might be 13. But, like, it takes a lot longer to build a relationship, to build a friendship. Um, there was a guy that I had my, my pastor or circuit pastors meeting this morning. And one of the pastors at the meeting uh, stated a fact he learned from uh, business marketing that for most businesses, it takes 40 to 50 touches of a person interacting with a business or a brand for them to have any interest in actually interacting with the brand. So it takes our eyes seeing an ad 40 or 50 times to start to think, oh, maybe I'll check out that brand. With something as foundational to living as Christianity is and, and the amount of impact that it has on a life, how many touches do you think that takes? Like, that's going to take more than a couple of goes and a, a quick questionnaire, right? Right. It, and it's going to take a, a developed process. It's going to take a relationship that allows you to have all of those interactions that it requires to build on. Yeah. Well, and I think you, you touched on a couple, I think, key, key things here. Um, and first is, it's not even just how big and how foundational Christianity is, right? Mm -hmm. What we do is hard. Absolutely. Like our faith basically says, buckle up because life is about to get a lot harder <laughs> for you. Um, Jesus says, I, I mean, not in those exact words, but Jesus says that a couple of times. He's like, this is not going to be easy. You are going to suffer on account of me. Um, we... <laughs> So not only are we asking someone, this is going to impact your whole life, but mm -hmm. this is going to make your whole life harder. Like that's not something that, unless you have a lot of trust in the person telling you that, that's not a change that you're going to make. Um, and then the other thing that I really, it, it takes a lot longer than just the extended edition of the Lord of the Rings for, for you to build a relationship like that. Um, just think about what it takes if you're listening, like, I won't think of your closest held beliefs. And I hope, I hope it's your Christian faith. Well, if, if it's not, you know, if it's not, not talk to one of us, because yeah. you, you need Jesus. Um, <laughs> but the, so like, think of the hardest thing it would be, it would, uh, it would be for someone to change your mind on. Mm -hmm. And I want you to think of how many people you know who could change your mind. And I'm guessing that list of people is fairly short, and I'm guessing that list of people are all um, individuals who you have known for a long time. And kind of speaking to our profession, you know, we're both pastors. I think this actually proposes a little bit of a difficulty for us. I mean, other than the obvious, um, because people want results, right? Yeah. Generally, like I'm blessed. I haven't heard this at Edgewater once yet. The whole like churches are measured by how much is in the offering plate and how many butts are in the seat. Um, mm -hmm. Which I think those can be helpful metrics. I don't want to throw, mm -hmm. there are some people who are like, we should completely ignore that. No, if no one in your mm -hmm. church is giving, there's probably a, a reason they're <laughs> not. Like there's. A, yeah. There's a theological reason behind. If no one's coming to reasons. church. Yeah there's probably a reason for like these, these numbers are worth yeah. reflecting on, but yeah, we live in, in a time where we want those metrics, metrics of success and we want them quickly. Like there, yeah. you see a, you see a church spring up on the street corner and it wasn't there one day and the next day they're worshiping 10,000 people. And you're like, why don't we have success that fast? Um, and I would say, genuine discipleship gen the, these genuine relationships they don't happen fast like if i'm if if my metric is are these genuine relationships where if i see someone someone struggling with something and i have the relationship with them where i can go to them and say this needs to change i'm happy if i'm getting like three or four people a year into relationships into like existences like that 
I'm not saying, oh, I want to triple our attendance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that's not going to happen if this is the attitude, this is the, the mentality you're taking. So I guess yeah, if, you're, if you're from my church listening, uh, we're going for uh, slow and genuine <laughs> rather than uh, lightning speed, I guess. Yeah. And I, I think like it's, it's hard not to look at the numbers though, right? As a, as a pastor, as someone who um, those numbers mean job security on some level, um, both butts in the seats and, you know, money in the plate, those numbers mean job security. Right. There is a fundamental but, reality that if you, yeah. if you don't have enough money in the offering plate to pay your salary, like, it's not magic. It's not going to come out of thin air. Exactly. Yeah. But at the same time, it's, there, there's a part of, of discipleship that is discipling both ourselves for Josh and I as pastors, but also our people that like those numbers are cool and we'd love to see them go up in both cases. But what is really like, what is the end goal? If we were a business, what would be our end goal? Our end goal is not butts in the seats. It's not money in the plate. Our end goal is souls in heaven. Like uh, when we took vows as pastors on our ordination day, the, there's a part of the, the vows that we take that say, yes, I will be responsible for the souls in my care. And that, that is our metric. That is our metric as pastors. Like, do I properly shepherd the souls in my care? And I think that then extends to uh, people within the faith, right? If you're a mom or a dad, if you're a grandma or a grandpa, and you've got kids or grandkids that are coming up in the church that are, um, or that are coming up outside of the church and uh, don't necessarily have a great connection point to Christ or to the faith, like part of your vocation as grandparent or parent is to form those relationships and start to foster those connections that encourage people in the faith that give you the opportunity to proclaim the gospel and and that happens in friendships that happens in business relationships that happens in uh connections that that kids make at school right like uh a big part of my formation as a christian happened in high school amongst my peer group Right, like th- these are things that those relationships are key to forming us and, and metrically helping us understand whether we're doing our job well or not. Yeah, and I like, and I think what is important to keep in mind, and I can imagine, I don't know if these kinds of people are listening to this podcast, but I can imagine certain kinds of people saying, well, they're not totally unrelated, and you're right. Okay. First of all, I can't measure how many souls are going to be in heaven. Like I, (laughs) that is a question that is way above my pay grade. I don't have access to that book. (laughs) It's not in my Kindle. But if someone is being discipled, if someone's faith is robust and being strengthened, they're going to be in church right? If your faith is important to you, you're going to seek out ways to grow and to be in community with other Christians. And Sunday worship is part of that. So if you're listening to this and you're thinking, I don't need church to be a Christian, technically you're right. In practice, I think that um, that at very least there's a logical disconnect if you're saying I'm a faithful Christian, but I don't go to church. Like Mm -hmm. you, you should be in worship with your brothers and sisters in Christ and something. um, And this is, this is going to sound arrogant, but it's not, or it might be, I don't know. (laughs) I had a sermon uh, a few weeks ago and one of the lines really stuck with me. And it's kind of weird that a line that I said stuck with me, but like, (laughs) sometimes that just happens. Holy Spirit did that, Josh. It wasn't you. It wasn't you. you. I think it is. It's the Holy Spirit thing. Cause like, sometimes (laughs) I'm preaching, I'm like, I, I wasn't planning on saying that, but man, that was cool. Um, yep. so this line is, if you don't think you need to be at church on Sunday, mm-hmm. that's too bad because someone else might need you there. Mm-hmm. Right? So if you're saying, I'm, I'm good in the faith, I don't need to be in church, I don't need that formation, I don't need that time of worship, 
That might be true. It's probably not, but it might be true. However, someone else might need you there. Someone might need to have the conversation that you're going to have with them. Someone might need your support or your expertise or your wisdom or your stupidity. Like, I don't know where your friends are at. Um, I, I need a healthy dose of stupidity every once in a while. It, I need it. That's why I'm on this podcast. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. Ben's one of the smartest but, pastors I know. Um, that's, that's too kind. Circling back to the formation part of this. I, I think what you just said about like, you might not necessarily feel like you need to be in church, but that somebody else might need you there. There's like pretty robust research from Pew and uh, different church planning agencies that says. For those of you who don't know, Pew is a big research center that does a lot of religion statistics. Like they survey everybody. Yeah, and they you- do a lot outside of religion too, but they one of the big things that at least as pastors that we pay attention to is a lot of their um, church and religion-based statistics. But uh, a lot of research has been done lately on the the formation and and just comfort level of getting people into a congregation, getting people into church in the first place. And one of the big things that uh, is really key to that is if someone comes to church for the first time and they meet two or three people along the way if they go back and they see those same people again that is huge and if you're not in church consistently and you're one of those people that somebody who's new to the faith who's just coming to church for the first time or maybe is seeking out church again after um, something has happened in their life and you're one of the people that they meet you're one of the people they run into and you're not there the next time they go that speaks volumes. That speaks volumes about what you actually care about, where you're at in terms of your, your priorities. And for them, it tells them, hey, this person that, that met me that was really nice to me, they don't seem to think that this place is a priority. And, and that, like, the, the simplest of interactions become a huge piece of the formation puzzle of, of this whole discipleship puzzle of this coming in and growing in the faith puzzle um consistency is key and there are so many ways to underscore that yeah and i think something we're kind of we're circling around that i, I want to take head on is this reality that in some of these formational christian relationships you are going to be the one being poured into mm. and in some of these relationships you are going to be the one pouring into someone else. And I think this is one of the things that like, I, I assume our average listener is not a pastor. <laughs> I know we have a couple of classmates who have tuned in. I don't know if they listened yeah. to the second episode. It did take like a month <laughs> to get it online. Um, we should have retitled that one, The Lost Track. Um, anyway. <laughs> But if you're listening, you're not a pastor, you're like, well, what is, what is this to me, right? Um, I think it's important that you look for those two kinds of people in your life, mm-hmm. right? Um, and something that comes to mind for me is, uh, it's actually a relationship I just kind of stumbled into lately. Um, so there's uh, one of my, one of my members I'm going to, I'm going to try and tell the story as generally as possible, but like anyone who knows him and this situation is going to know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, So he hosts a Wednesday night Bible study. And most of the people who go to this Bible study are not affiliated with Edgewater at all. They're not affiliated Mm -hmm. with the congregation at all. Um, And he, he invites me to it every week, which is awesome. Um, (laughs) It's kind of funny. Uh, cause he, he first introduced, he's like, this is a safe space for you. And the two, two of the members that go from the congregation are the, are the president of the congregation and my head elder and my circuit visitor sometimes goes. So not a safe place for me. These are like the three people who <laughs> would be considered my bosses. Um, 
What are you talking about, Josh? You got a hundred bosses. That's true. I do, and it's great. I love, <laughs> I love them. <laughs> but this is not what I would call. Anyway, that's beside the yeah. point. And focus, focus. We're focusing. <laughs> Sometimes. So at this Bible study, um, he he invites me. He's like, "This is a good place," and it is. It's it's a really good Bible study. Um, I don't go all the time because. I value, like, I like my nights at home. Um, mm-hmm. And so it's, it's hard for me sometimes to, to give up another night. Um, even though every time I go, I, it's, it's an awesome experience. Anyway, so this, uh, this guy who leads this Bible study pours into these guys. He really does. He brings them together. He encourages them to be together. He leads them through these studies and he's pouring into them. And I, I'm sure he gets some out of it, but I think he's definitely pouring into these other guys more than he's taking out. And what is so cool. So I went to this study and I started having a conversation with this guy who has been poured into by this leader. And this guy's pouring into me. And I'm having this conversation with this guy that is really encouraging. It's really uplifting to me. Um, it's just, and what, what And the reason why is because we have the kind of this, there's this tension, I guess, that maybe I'm making up between spirituality and religion. And Lutherans tend to have, they have a lot of religion and sometimes they don't have too much spirituality. This guy has a lot of spirituality and maybe not as much religion. Um, But so he's pouring into me with all of that spirituality and he has such an incredible focus on the spirit's work in his life. And he's talking about that. And he's telling me a story. Um, and that's just kind of like, you wouldn't expect it, but these relationships that pour into each other, it's kind of, it's working its way around. And I guess my hope, my prayer is that I'm then in turn pouring into this leader um, when I'm meeting with him, when I'm, uh, when we're in church on Sunday. So um, what I would encourage you is if you're listening and you're wondering, well, what, What do these relationships look like? I'd say, look for those people who you can pour into. Like not every relationship has to be to your benefit. There are some relationships that are are great to be in that just give you an opportunity to bless someone else, to to lead someone else, to build up someone else. But then don't don't like neglect those relationships that you're getting built up either. So um, Another example, I, we got a grandmother in our congregation who really pours into her grandkids and it's incredible to see the relationship that they have there. So, um, it's, it's important to have both of those kinds of relationships and anytime you think that you're not getting enough out of church or you're not getting out enough, it's maybe your role isn't to get something out of it. Maybe Mm -hmm. your role is to give someone else something from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, and a lot of like to to get even more specific on like what is what does it look like to be the one filling someone up or um, what does it look like to be the one receiving that care um, that could be a, something as simple as encouragement um, you know I attempted to chant the liturgy this past week um, for for all saints uh, thanks Josh. Uh, for those of you who don't know me well, that's a wild thing because uh, I am like I I grew up a little bit with traditional liturgy, but like my comfort comfort level and comfort area is much more uh, contemporary worship. And so, like I was trying to do something like very traditional and something that I thought would bring a lot of comfort and to some love, to some extent, nostalgia to uh, some of the members of the congregation, especially some of the people that were hurting. Um, it wasn't great. I struggled, I'll admit that. But afterward, there were a number of people who came up to me and said, you know, that was a really refreshing change of pace. And I really appreciated that. And so like, I could see that I had genuinely done something to pour into these people by trying to give them something that was part of their spiritual formation in the past and, and kind of give it back, give that back to them again. But then they also filled me by just reminding me, hey, like we appreciate the effort. 
uh, we know that this isn't necessarily your comfort zone, but you tried and you are trying to care for us. And you did care for us, even if you didn't nail the chance. It was great. Um, and so, you know, it can happen even in the same conversation that both parties are getting filled. And it could be something super simple as encouragement. Uh, it could be something as simple as um, we have a couple of members who will pick up uh, other family members and drive them to church every Sunday. Um, and it can be something as simple as that. And we have another member who can't drive herself and she always gets rides from people. That like that is a, a super filling activity to, to just bring people to worship and, and let them be a part of the body of Christ. Um, it doesn't take a lot. It takes small steps, but you got to make them. The, you, you don't gain any ground by doing nothing. Right. Well, and I, so we talked a lot about kind of church uh, being, and mm -hmm. I think church and worship on Sunday is great space for this. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not what it had. And I, we even brought up Bible study. It doesn't have to happen in mm -hmm. those Absolutely. settings. Mm -hmm. Like um, grabbing coffee with a friend who's going through a tough time and just talking with them, uh, keeping in mind, like, your Christian faith and like, say they're struggling with uh, their marriage and our faith is, is clear about divorce. It's, we should not consider that an option. So you sit down with coffee with your friend who's struggling with their marriage and you, you talk with them about it, you pray with them about it, but you do it the entire conversation without ever like suggesting that divorce would be an option. You are filling them up in a Christian relationship, because you are with them in their suffering and their pain, you're seeking the way forward with them, with our, with your values, with your faith in mind. Mm -hmm. um, so it really can be as simple. Like I have, there are a couple of guys, they, they meet up every once in a while. And by every once in a while, I mean much more frequently than every once in a while. And they go out in the backyard and have cigars. And it's like, I know that their faith is driving a lot of what they say and how they think about things. So I am confident that when they have conversations about the issues that they're facing in life, the, the difficulties they're having or the joys they're having, that's a background to their conversation. And that is going to be an opportunity for them to grow and develop as Christians. So if, if you're hearing out of this podcast so far, like you need to be in church, you need to be in Bible study. I mean, don't ignore that because you should be, yeah, yeah. right? But that's not the only place. And, and yeah. I would say it's probably not even the most um, powerful place that formation takes place. Mm -hmm. That was not a well-constructed sentence. If this was a paper, I'd rewrite that one. Um, I said place too many times. <laughs> Sorry. It, it's not the only uh, thing or interaction that, that drives formation. And right. I, I mentioned at the beginning, like in, in marketing, it takes 40 or 50 touches for a brand to go from um, like unknown to, to something that you'd be willing to interact with. And I think the same thing kind of happens in church, but in church being uh, church proper, not necessarily your building, um, like it takes 40 or 50 interactions from that first time where somebody says, hey, like my faith has really helped me through this. And somebody like here's for the first time, oh, Christianity is actually this thing that's important to somebody in my life. And it might take a 40 or 50 more touches between that first interaction where they realize, hey, Christianity is actually relevant in someone I know's life to, hey, Christianity might be something that I need to explore. And those interactions look a lot like what Josh was talking about, where it's sometimes as simple as a conversation. It could be as simple as a hug and, and a, like, how can I pray for you? What's up? What are you struggling with this week? Uh, especially if you see someone, if you see someone struggling, ask them how you can help them. Uh, like those are key interactions and relationships and building someone in their faith, um, especially someone who's coming from outside of the faith or especially for kids who are, are learning the faith, who are growing in the faith, um, that discipleship process, it takes as many hands on deck as you can get and as much 
care and, and relationship as you can get to get them from baptized infant to adult that's going to stay in the faith until their dying day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that kind of circles back to the beginning of our conversation of if we're looking for a growth in the church, um, if I'm the only one building relationships that are bringing people into the church, mm -hmm. you're, you're not going to see quick growth. I think mm -hmm. if, if you want robust, genuine growth in the church and you want to see it quickly, you're right. All hands have to be on deck because if like, if, if everyone in my, we worshiped 71 last, last Sunday, um, mm -hmm. if every one of those 71 people, you know what, 12 of them were, were Sunday school kids. So we'll give them a pass. <laughs> so 59, 59, people. if 59 people this week reached into relationships that they had been building for however many years and said, and finally like, and, and, assuming they've been building these relationships and acting consistently with their faith the whole time. And they finally pulled the trigger and they say, you know what? I care about you. And this is something I think is important for you. And I'm, I'm encouraging you to come to church with me because I, I care about you. And they, and that relationship is the medium for that. Mm -hmm. That's when you see the growth because next week we have 108 people in there. Add the kids mm -hmm. back in, you have 120. Um, so if you're, if you're saying, you know, how is the church going to grow and people are doomsday about the church, they're like, the church is in decline. The church is going to die. I don't buy that. Mm -hmm. If you go out in mission, if you go out in the relationships and, and, and live the gospel and then speak the gospel to people that you are in relationship with, that trend is going to reverse because people are going to be like, this person cares about me and they say, this is good for me. And it is. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of circles us around the beginning, I guess. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm the sports analogy this because it feels like the thing to do. Uh, so this last week, I think it was this last, no, uh, might've been a week and a half ago. Uh, Derek Henry, running back for the Tennessee Titans, one of the most indestructible men in all of football. I'm sorry for your loss, Josh. Um, I am a Colts fan. I was that's right. happy. I'm sorry for game. your win. I'm sorry that your win came in such a, a deplorable way. Yes, um, thank you. You're welcome. Um, it was a moral conundrum for me. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> it's it's a slippery slope. But Derrick Henry, who is one of the most consistently healthy players in all of the NFL, broke a bone in his foot. He's out for the rest of the year. The Tennessee Titans stink without Derrick Henry because he is their offense. Nine times out of ten, they're handing the ball to Derrick Henry and saying, run forward, good sir. Uh, I they feel call like him the king down there. That's true. They do. And I feel like that is kind of a picture of how the, the church – at least a lot of the churches in America are expected to run like nine times out of 10 pastor gets, uh, is, is, is told, Hey, go do this because we need to advance the church. We're going to break our pastors, right. Or other things that are important aren't going to get done. Um, and the reality is if we want to move the ball effectively downfield, like you do in, in most good teams on, in the NFL, you're going to have multiple running backs to cycle through. You're going to actually throw the football. Um, that's probably a revelation that most Tennessee Titans fans haven't seen a lot of. The forward um, pass is legal, guys. Yeah, it has been since uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Um, but, like, it's not all on one person. One person does not make the church. The pastor does not make the church. The people make the church. It takes all of us working together. It takes all of us forming relationships. It, it takes all of us forming each other, including the congregation, forming us as pastors to do our job better, to love people better, to love you better if you're one of our parishioners. Like, it's an all-hands-on-deck effort. And if we neglect that as the church, 
that's when we see decay. That's when we see death of churches. That's when we see, that's when we see decline. And all of it circles back to relationship, relationship, relationship. Yeah. So I think we, we good. We want to, yeah. we want to give our closing thoughts. Yeah. Um, so I think my closing thought is going to be like my takeaway for, for mm-hmm. you listening to this is look for Christian relationships in your life that are both going to challenge you and be something that some something someone that you can pour into and Mm -hmm. i i guess i want to use a sports analogy but not like a i guess not a real sports analogy um for a brief period of my life i was a personal trainer and when i was like consulting with people when i was because i i didn't really do so much as i'm here with you every workout i did more like workout plan development I would say, you need to find a friend who's going to work out with you. And they said, oh, yeah, so they can support me. Yeah, that's kind of true. Um, But what I would tell them is more than that, you need a friend who's going to harass you if you miss. (laughs) Like, I I don't know if you knew this, Ben, but for for the first two years we were at the seminary, I I had uh, three or four guys who were in the gym with me every morning at 6 a.m. It's not because I was so encouraging. It's because when they skipped, I made fun of them for at least the next 24 hours. <laughs> so oh, that's a beautiful thing. Look for those Christian relationships and look for the ones that are actually going to push you. Who, when you mm-hmm. miss church, they're going to say, hey, you should have been in church. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's my takeaway is look for those relationships in your own life. Yeah, I, I think uh, my reflection based on what we were talking about it it struck me as you were talking about the people that we pour into people that pour into us i think we don't necessarily do a lot of reflecting on how our relationship with people like impact us or impact them Um, and, and i think it's important for us to just kind of on occasion cycle through the relationships in our lives whether it's you know friends coworkers, family members and just think about okay, if my relationship with this person were to end, what would they be losing? Or what would I be losing? Because you'll, you'll understand the value of that relationship. You'll understand the value of uh, what's being brought either to you or to that other person. And I think a lot of that will help you build deeper relationships because you can kind of start to see, you know, you can see really clearly the value of those relationships um and and you can grow from there and you can you can add nuance to those relationships if your relationship is built on one thing like you can add to that too like you can you can find other ways to incorporate uh either christian growth and fellowship or uh new avenues of of, uh, connection whether it be through like Josh and I love to nerd out about hockey uh, and uh, theology and letter Kenny and uh, you know just like random other stuff like you you keep adding these layers you keep growing in relationship with one another it keeps giving you more and more opportunities to grow not only as as friends but also encourage one another uh console one another love one another be christ to one another um or be christ to someone that needs to hear the the saving message of of jesus for the first time like that just i i rambled there a bit but think about your relationships reflect on them and like see what's there understand what's there grow what's there yeah that could be a tagline you could that could brand that that, yeah um so in closing uh like we said last time i think last time was a long time ago (laughs) um it's kind of weird for us to record a prayer for you to then watch or listen to us Mm -hmm. praying um Mm -hmm. so instead we're going to leave you with these takeaways first of all but then 
um, just with some ideas for you to incorporate into your own prayers. And I think, mm -hmm. I think I speak for both of us when we say the takeaway for this is for you to pray that God bless you, bless your relationships, that they would be, mm -hmm. um, would be avenues where you can be Christ to others and where others can be Christ to you. Um, mm -hmm. So that is our prayer for you guys. And hopefully you guys can pray, uh, can add that to your prayer lives as well. So with that, brothers and sisters, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.